Bali, Coastal Resort is a sufficient place for the crowned eagles to bring up chicks. There's a really interesting mosaic of housing areas, the golf course, and these lovely indigenous coastal forests, which are just stacked full of blue dica. There's plenty of monkeys and lots of other species that the crowned eagles need as prey. The crowned eagles are so close to the lodge with a lot of human traffic. The crowned eagles may select the tree rather than the surrounding area. Those chicks that are raised in the nest just take it as part of their life, so they already grow up with a high affinity for human contact. And they can then go out and set up a new nest in an area where a wild crowned eagle wouldn't think of. Gum trees are a preferred nest site for crowned eagles in this area. Crowned eagles like to nest 20 or even 30 metres up a tree. And when a gum tree reaches two and a half metres in circumference, it has a very smooth bark and vervet monkeys and other species which antagonise crowned eagles at the nest can't climb the tree to harass them. So it creates a really interesting conflict of interest with an invasive exotic tree providing a nest site for threatened raptors, not just crowned eagles, but fish eagles and even woolly neck storks. So I think Zimbali has made the right decision to protect a small number of gums here for the sake of the crowned eagles. Crowned eagles will rebuild their nest every year from trees in the nearby areas, particularly eucalyptus, pine, camphor and quinine. Also some other indigenous trees which have insecticidal properties that keep the number of mites and flies and other insects down on their nest. Because the nest is so large, with many layers of sticks, they're a virtual apartment building for lots of small animals. And while crowned eagles hunt large animals, they won't tolerate predators for very small animals that come nearby. You've got lots of monkeys around, even genets at night, so you get a day and a night shift of predators. The crowned eagle will offer the protection, so predators won't go near those places. So often you'll see lots of little animals living inside the nest structure. Bronze mannequins, there are geckos. With all the fresh sprigs and leafy material that crowned eagles put on the nest, millipedes come up and forage on all that decaying leaf matter. Nearby we've also got colonies of village weavers and even dormice in some of the indigenous trees. In Zimbali, there was a really interesting interaction that I recorded on nest monitoring cameras. Within five days of the young juvenile eagle fledging from the nest, the Egyptian geese moved in and took over. They were combating with the young eagle every time it returned to the nest to receive some food from its parents. But those geese managed to incubate and successfully hatch seven young ducklings after 38 days. Within 24 hours of hatching, the parents led them off to the nearby dam. The reason the chick, which fledged in February 2013, became so familiar with people in Zimbali was because of the geese. The adult crowned eagles would come in and drop food at the nest site. The geese would clear out for a few minutes, and once the juvenile flew back to the nest, the geese would throw the meat onto the ground. The juvenile had to stand there and eat while people were walking past. By the time the young eagle was a few months older, it had no fear of people. Crowned eagles breed every second year. Zimbali is very interesting because out of the last 10 years, eight chicks have fledged. Breeding every year is very interesting because crowned eagles take two months to build a nest and prepare themselves for egg laying. The female incubates for 50 days and then it takes around 90 to 120 days for the young eagle to fledge. It will return to the nest to receive food deliveries for at least five months.
In Zimbali, where there's a surplus of prey, the adult pair is ready to breed again by the following winter. So often they will not tolerate the presence of the juvenile around the nest. These naive juveniles come into contact with people and with suburbia and they don't have all the skills that they might need to hunt wild prey. So we tag the eagles with coloured ID rings. They also have a saffron embossed steel ring which will stay on for its entire life. The reason is to understand more about the demographics of the population, understand where individual birds move and in the future where they set up as adults. The most efficient way to tag the eagles is to climb the nest when the chick is around 70 days old. It is almost skeletally mature, so the tag will fit nicely. So I bring the chick down to the ground, put ID rings on and take any other measurements and samples we need. Within an hour, I return the chick to the nest and life returns to normal for the eagles. The male and female of this pair could be anywhere from 6 to perhaps 20 to 30 years old. It's impossible to tell whether it's 5 or 20 years old. With the identification rings, we will be able to tell in the future. It's those four life functions that one wants. Feeding, breeding, nesting, resting. If you've got all those opportunities in one place, then you can pass on your genetic material.